Well, we've had over the last few days looking at the animal studies that you might have. Well, looking at animals, which is a study you can have in class four, and then the plants in class five, and minerals, again, can be a basis for a, a lesson in class six, but also physics begins in class six, again, part of this change. And there's quite a few things you can look at in physics. We've got three days, and so I just want to focus on a couple of things to do with light. So you can use, often you can use things around heat, light, sound, as sort of basic um, experiments. So with sound, you can connect back to, you know, people have learned the recorders, maybe they've learned violins and how to tune them and, and, and aspects of how do you make sounds. We did this last year, if I recall, you know, scratching, scraping, crunching, plucking, all sorts of different things that we had. So we're going to look at light today. That's why we darken the room, if you can understand that. <laughs> because the room otherwise is full of light. Uh, well, we'll darken it for a certain point. If it's not for all that we do. I'm going to do a number of things. You might say it's the first the first element where there's a demonstration or an activity related um, to light. And we're not going to try and get an explanation. I'm going to just try say we're going to demonstrate a theory. Remember last year that we said we start with the phenomena. And we don't say a lot about it. We just do it and observe and try and be as present as possible within it. And then at the end of that time, having a a review, just saying, with everything hidden away, just a recall of what happens. I see Roberto Trostley makes more the point that this should be the teacher's task to make a quick summary of it so that it takes it into the imaginative realm. It's not strongly there in the sense picture that you're watching it, but everything's hidden away and then coming back into into the imagined imagination. When it's described, you have to use your imaginative forces to, to create the picture. As I say, it's also an element where language comes into it. You had experiences which are not language-based, but you now have to put this into words. So it's a matter of finding vocabulary and all those sort of things. It's all part of the science lesson. So we're going to look at some you know, some little things, demonstrations, activities we can do to discover things about light or that's connected with light. And like a lot of physics, what we do is we go further because we use the light of thinking. That what you see is often invisible and you have to use your thinking process to understand it. That's part of the essence of what's going on. But we don't have a lot of explanation as we're going, so you have to sort of kind of zip your mouth on that, because sometimes there's quite a, a, a thing you wanted to explain and show and demonstrate all the ideas, whereas you want to try and get it that people see, just see things, and later on think, now what was it I saw and what, what sort of idea is can you discover in what you saw? So, the first thing we're going to do, and I don't say it's necessarily the first thing you'd do with a class, but we're doing this, you're adults, but we're ha doing having some experiences. We'll go through some thinking processes. So, I've got some things up here, and I'd like you to come around, and we'll... Uh, do some things and we'll also think about them later. So people can be on either side of the table. So I've got a piece of white paper. I've got here some what we call mapping pins. 
they're long length, but so that they're quite long and with a head you can discover them, also push them in. What we're going to do is I'm going to put in a couple of pins here. trying as much as possible to make them vertical. Which isn't quite so easy. Because I want people, each of them, to sort of get in. And you want you to look so that the one pin you can look at it and you can see that you can get to a certain point, whether you need your glasses on or not, to see when one pin covers the other entirely so that the front pin is all that you see. And then I want you to do so much on each side, put another pin in so that that covers the pin that you see there. Somebody can do it from the other end. Is that with one eye open or two eyes open? <laughs> <laughs> try it. Just experience it. Just try it. What happens? Come a little bit closer to this pin, because there's a few others need to go on that side. So we keep adding pins? You keep adding pins. <clears throat> so that each person has a turn, is the idea. The idea is that the last pin will be sort of more at the edge of the paper, yeah. just to give you a, a visualization. You can try opening both eyes and see what happens. You're meant to be doing it just with one eye, right? Mm. Find out. Yeah. Oh, yes, I see what you mean. Everyone have a turn? Mm -hmm. Now you can have a look at a ruler. I'm not testing you to see whether you're right eyed or left eyed. <laughs> I suggest you don't put your finger on top of the edge, but yeah, like that. What am I? Sp am I look along the ruler? the ruler. What do you notice? Oh, the ruler curved. keeps on. It's in the curve. I don't Puzzlement, total puzzlement. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's very sad. No, I should have used my other eye. <laughs> yes, it's supposed to use your strong eye. I suggest you use one eye. 
So it's sort of see this line here. I don't know if you got at the point that you could make it disappear into a point. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, if you didn't, you could sort of get. No, no, I definitely didn't. And of course, if you do this, you could sort of bend the rule, and so you'd have to. So this one. It was quite connect, disconnected with the pin thing, or was the consequence of putting the pins in? Uh, it's, the, it's, it's like foreshortening. Yes, he's grinning. Yeah. 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 Was that a wink? No, <laughs> no, you have to... <laughs> yeah, the point is, <laughs> science actually engenders a certain thinking about what you're noticing. What am I noticing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a point? <laughs> I'm trying to be the opposite of the person who tells you everything oh, you have to say. You keep asking questions. Oh, I'm going to go around without knowing. Oh. <laughs> no, I hope you don't at the long run. But <laughs> I'm going to bring the ruler into my sleep. <laughs> don't let it rule your sleep. Eh? <laughs> okay, I can't see anything like that. Right? I think this is what our son does in his <laughs> dungeons in Damascus. Takes you down and makes you look at it. <laughs> yes, I need to look to see Because they're different heights. Or something. Yeah. So it's just looking along the bottom. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. This. Well, the corrugation, when it goes in, it hits the corrugation. Yeah, the so, yeah, that's why I've got to be. Yes, I should have said that people need to look at the bottom of the pin when they're doing it. Are you long sighted? That's all that already. So And the interesting thing is, now when I look down here, I can actually see this going in a curve like that, so I don't know quite it. Um, what it really needed was to have, I needed to give the instruction, I think, that you need to have the bottom of the pin in line. And for the most part, the most part, that's pretty good, but at this one, Somewhere, you've got the next one into there in line. If you lose the top of the pin, then it sort of, uh, yeah. So there's an element there that when you're looking with, with light, see, there's something, what do we call this? A straight edge, we call it a straight edge sometimes. And so what is straightness? Alignment of points. Yeah. Sometimes they say it's the shortest distance between two points. That's sometimes said. So, what I'd like to do, so this is looking at light, you know, just through air. Now, 